haven't seen the worst of it yet. So. <laughs> it's a very good shot. Little fade, isn't it? That. Yeah. But straight out. Yeah. Good. And again. I do. I do try to just go slightly on the toe. I do. You address on the, the toe. Time. And I do try to strike a toe a bit. Okay. Uh, which I know is not going to help my hook. So baby fade on mm -hmm. the target. There's a slight wind off the left to them. Yeah, but the spin axis is a fade. Right, okay. So you're setting it off with a rightward spin axis. Yeah. It's tiny. Okay, and again. It's fine. Slightly drawy, but good. Okay, come and have a look. It's good. It's an interesting one for you. Um, we need to get you more precise mm. in a lot of the things you do. Um, the numbers you deliver aren't that bad. They jump around a little bit, which is your lack of precision. Um, so, for instance, your setup with your driver is quite um, abstract, for want of a better word. It's not, for someone who thinks and reads like you do, it's not the textbook that I would mm. have expected okay. from someone. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens to your club path. So, your driver club path is four across, out to in. Out to win. Happy with what that means? You're swinging left? Yeah. Slightly surprising. I thought it was more neutral than that. Yeah, and then your face is averaging three open to that four, which is why we saw quite a few gentle fades. Last shot, for instance, you swung three left with a face zero to mm. that three, so that's, you get that okay. poly one. And then you have one where you swung four left and the path was ten open to that, and you got the big chop off to the right. It would be good to get you a consistent miss at least. Mm. Um, I almost feel like you're one of those players and there's so many of you around that you're thinking so hard that you have a different miss every time because you're trying like a different delivery every time. I spent the last nine months trying to wipe my brain. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a lot of you a around, there's a lot of you that. around who are, I often think overthinking something that you could probably do quite naturally. I think that's probably fair. Um, from your sporting... Um, background like with your tennis and that that you mentioned mm. at the start because tennis you haven't got the time to think about it like with golf mm. you just got to react and often that reaction in tennis it's more your reaction to your opponent's reaction to your shot that gets you down which you can't control uh, golf you haven't got that it's just you against that bloody ball and course all the time it's that personal punch oh, absolutely all the time. Yeah. I, I'm my worst <laughs> yeah. critic um, I am path is three left Face averaging two open to that three, mm. gentle fades onto mm. the target yeah. kind of thing. You don't hit down very much with the no, iron. I very rarely take a divot. Yeah, which I think uh, contributes to a little bit of your lower striking for you, which then contributes to your short, long miss being the problem, not the left and right yeah, so much. Um, so it'll be interesting if we can change that. So a little bit more down. I'd like the path to straighten up a bit more mm. for you. Um, this concerns me slightly as well. You're nearly two degree toe ended down with your upright clubs. That's a real surprise to me. At 5'11. You know, I'm 5'11. White dot would be two degrees toe ended up for me. You're two toe ended down, so that means your hands are being delivered considerably That's higher than mine. Um, which would be, I would like to get rid of that. It was a seven iron you were hitting, wasn't it? it? Was. And you're presenting 35 degrees of dynamic loft, which is a lot of loft for a seven iron, which is why we saw kind of high floaters. And I, I seem to strike my irons, not just because, I don't think because of strike, they do go high. Yeah. My distance off my driver is a good bit longer. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that. you're hitting on the bottom of the face with a lot of loft. Mm. Um, not a recipe for long bowl. Mm. Um, yeah, 
let's see if we can move you around a little bit will be interesting it'd be let's play with what your perception of swinging left and right and lie are because mm. we already had a little bit of a conversation about swinging more upright or swinging more flat those kind of words um, and that's why I struggle with the word swing plane mm. um, because in effect this is kind of swing plane this dynamic lie button or number sure Everyone's thinking about where they are halfway back. What happens at the ball but the correct, this is the only lie that really is measured or cared about. Um, so many people get swing playing very, very confused. Um, I could show you people who swing on those 2D straight lines that people draw on these kind of systems, mm. but they don't deliver a very functional lie, which then affects the face of the path as well and mm -hmm. certain strikes. Sure. Um, for me, at the moment, it's a little jittery. Mm. That is we need to get you kind of no just surprise. popping it forward and not, it's a little bit, I'm gonna just do this on this one, I'm just gonna do that on this one, I'm just gonna do this, I'm like, whoa. Let's have a, let's have a, like a medium point and then start playing around from there kind of thing, yeah? Just before we hit, um, this column here, lie, averaging two toe down, very common to see those kind of traces um, with that lie. So that's your address position, left mm -hmm. foot, right foot. Mm -hmm. And this is your center of pressure. Think of center of pressure as um, which foot is pushing down harder on the mat. Sure. So if you push your right foot down harder than the left, that little uh, circle there will move towards sure. your right. Doesn't always have to mean weight. They're slightly different things because um, weight's not measured in this way. Um, but for often for the ease of uh, thinking about it in lessons, people will call it weight. I understand, yeah. Um, backswing makes a lot of sense. You move your center of pressure, so you start pushing down as you pull the club back, you start pushing down more with your right foot than your left. You actually pull your left foot off the ground, kind of Jack Nicholas style -y. Yeah, I do. Not a problem. Um, it's something we might talk about, might not. I, you know, lots of great players do that. But what happens is your centre of pressure, see how straight it's moved. Mm. Now when you come down to hit the ball, you want to throw it like massively out onto your left toe. So mm. your left heel isn't on the ground, yep. left toe is. And your centre of pressure now is massively forwards of where you started. Yep, so that. if you just stand on the mat for me, and let's say you've got your 7-iron in your hand here, okay, and address the T, say. Now, this is fixed. Club's not allowed to go beyond that point. If I was to push you forwards, don't make the club go forwards, what's happening to that handle and the lie of the club? Yeah, added lie, right? Yeah, it's toe ending down, isn't it? So as you try to interact with the ground that way, it encourages that toe ending down vice versa, so everyone talks about early extension such a buzzword in coaching because it, it sounds quite but it sounds quite coachy, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's one of those words I know I can say in a video and it'll tick boxes with people watching it. I mean nothing. That's what it means. Really. Yeah, it's just one of those it's like um flexion and Forex. It's just there's coaching words. There's, I mean there's proning. That, yeah, all that like I, I reckon I could get a complete non coach give them the coach's dictionary and tell them just to just give them a script and people would watch those videos and think this guy's clever because you say those buzz words um so do you do you push forwards because you want to deliver that lie or does pushing forwards deliver that lie it's chicken and egg i have massive improvements in pressure changes when i challenge people's understanding of lie delivery it is but that that is has to happen because you want to deliver toe end to end down. I, I think that's very interesting because I've because you've probably I'm, worked on early extension exactly. Haven't you? But if you're and not, I never really put the two together. You're not doing lie. Mm. When I explain that to you, there, that's so obvious, mm. isn't it? Mm. How can you early extend and not change lie unless you get in some pretty yeah. funky I'm place with your hands? High hands rather than yeah. just going forward. Yeah. Well, you're thinking of stopping going forwards rather than thinking. So if my brief is that you have to deliver a high handle, mm. then that trace happens all the day long. Mm. And that brief can happen because there's a twig there. So you don't want to hit the twig as you're swinging. 
So you deliver a high handle to make sure you can still hit the ball. So you play a funky under the tree shot and you're mm. early extent. Mm. It's, a, it's a funny one. I always think it's an interesting how I get people saying, oh, I'm working on early extension. Okay, so what's happening? Why? Well, because it's not right, is it? Well, is it not? I mean, I can show you Darren Clark um, changes his life quite dramatically with his clubs. And he has a push forwards when I videoed him and I worked with him in like high speed and some pretty accurate footage. Um, I wouldn't change him. He's open champion, pretty functional. It's so for you, I see it as an issue for your striking. So it's something we need to talk about. Early extension on its own is just, a, it's nothing. But if it's affecting the lie and then the, it's affecting the delivery, so the strike and maybe club to buff, then it becomes an issue. Which would you say that there is also an inherent balance? Oh, yeah, it's, look at the line. Look Problem how there. wiggly. Look at it. Look, I mean, I'm going to. Just imagine I'm stood. I bought, when I was on holiday, mm. okay, I bought a um, paddle board. Mm. Stand on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If I had the mat on the paddle board, what do you reckon my centre of pressure trace would be like on the first couple of goes on it? <laughs> it's just going like this. Because I'm like going, oh, where's, where, where's my balance? Where is my point where I can not fall over? Oh, falling in the water. Get up again, do it again. Um, people hit golf shots from stationary, flat, sterile ground, like they're on a paddleboard. You put me on, put a golf club and a ball on a paddleboard and ask me to hit a shot, I'm going to be pretty crap at striking it mm. because I've got a really poor connection with the ground. I've seen your buns. If you'll... Yeah. Do you mean those things? Yeah. Yeah, the balance, yeah. yeah. I can I can deliver off those pretty good strike patterns and pretty good. Uh, um, I can not change the lie. I can override them and still get the lie at zero. So the ability to, to deliver the club in unstable uh, uh, conditions allows me to play from very different lies in different winds. Those kind. Of so you've got what we've done for you is we've moved the ball slightly more central. Mm -hmm. And then what's the brief? What have I asked you to, where are you trying to hit this ball? Low right. Low right, show me. Good. Good. Brilliant. Hello. Not as good a strike, but Healy was it? No. And low, yeah. Come and look, come and look. So I said to you, I want you to hit the ball low right. And then I stood with you and said, we're gonna get, your ball position was kind of on almost left toe. I just moved it a bit more into the central of a seven iron. Mm -hmm. uh, your shoulders tend to point at the car park, open. so what people would yeah. call open, and I just turned them back towards target. That's the only kind of traditional coaching I did. And then I changed the brief. I said, hit it low right. And we talked a little bit about how you might deliver. You totally, told me how you would I just told you maybe not to open your hips up so much so I feel like you're sliding them rather than opening them didn't I it was the kind of early other thing um club path on those was five from the inside club path for you when you walked in was three outside completely changed your club path face was too close to that path nice uh, little baby jaws which is what we saw part is too open to that mm. path uh, your dynamic lie now was 30 degrees uh, sorry, your dynamic loft, 30 degrees. Uh, you were 35. That's why it's lower. We took loft off. Still a little high. Yeah, but it's close. And the lie is back to zero. Mm. Uh, where you were almost two degrees total. Shots were considerably more functional, weren't they? How much tighter they got. Yeah, it felt a lot more consistent. Yeah, so they got tighter left and right and short and long. The greens over the yellows. Mm. Um, the problem you've got, and lots of people have, is that you didn't feel like that was a real shot, did you? Because I told you to hit a shot that's not right, low right. You know, who's going to say, going? I want you to hit everything low right? I, I should be saying, I want you to rip it yeah. at the target, high draw, you know. If I, were, if, I was to, if I wanted to hit low right on the course, I would have aimed right and planned to hit straight yeah. on the line. Yeah. Rather than push it. Yeah. But I mean, that, when I watched you hit those, that just looked like the simplest way to play a seven iron all day long. Mm. Like if we were playing in a pro air, what, you, what shot you're playing here, and you said, oh, I'm going to hit my high fadey one. I'd go, what? No, 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 you're not. Just hit that low right one, can you? Just mm. get it front, middle, right, and the green, two putts, par. You get a shot here, come on, let's get you in. Mm. 
lots of people often when you tell them instruct them to do it that way it's like not enough for them they want it to be more technical that was much more your feel of hitting a shot I want you to hit it lower right you pretty articulated to me how you're going to do it and you did it mm -hmm. so the instruction there was really kind of just more like awakening you to the fact that you can do it quite easily mm -hmm. but not if you're thinking about where the club is here or here or here it's it's as you said it didn't really feel like a real shot yeah. because I would have aligned myself to that target totally what they're real shots mm. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more videos. Find me on Instagram at CrossfieldMark. Also on Twitter at 4GolfOnline. Find me on Facebook, Mark Crossfield. Thanks for watching. Post comments as always, and see you soon.